today is going to be an opportunity for you to just have a taste of what an inner fitness workout so that you when you walk away uh, you will have a sense of ways in which you can actively proactively attend to your life not just talking about self-care not just talking about doing the work but literally having a sense of what it means to do the work how it feels to do the work and your own capability the work of inner fitness is really you with you you developing a relationship with your subconscious you taking on practices that can become default practices in your life that keep you aligned and moving forward so talking to yourself in this sense is not crazy it is one of the most important things that you can think about inner fitness this workout the exact same way that you think about physical fitness you step into a class you may not be at the level of the class so you do your work at the level that you are at and by consistently doing the work you come to know the terminology you come to know um, what you can expect and you grow and strengthen yourself the work the concepts they are like rabbit holes that means every time you meet them there's more they take you to a deeper place and this is not work where you do it's one off and it's done it is the more you do it the layers to yourself get peeled and you get to that part of yourself that meets right up with all the power that you are and it you know, it's a lifetime um, lifestyle kind of thing. Our workout mat is the journal. So you should have a journal. When you see where you start, and then a year from now, and then five years from now, I've been keeping journals for 30 years. And it is amazing that things that I put in my journal 30 years ago is, is the life that I'm living right this moment. And so, helping you all to understand and embrace the power of being intentional is what this work is about you know self-mastery is the ability to see yourself in action that inside of us we have this range of self and we can best see it by naming it there's a surviving self that's the self that is always ready for a fight, always looking for what's wrong, always, you know, dukes up, thinking about how something's wrong and against them, being sure, you know, that they know and, and, and can see people's bad intentions. Then you've got the thriving self. The thriving self is the one that moves up the beach, always curious, always moving forward always willing to see drawn by something bigger than itself and then you have the infinite self the infinite self is that part of self that literally can wrap its arms around our confusion that is so compelling that it literally draws us to it you can think about the infinite self like clay you can take clay and mold clay into a thousand different forms, but the essence of it never changes. Inside of us are these three cells. And when we start to pay attention, we can literally begin to see these cells and then deliberately and intentionally activate these cells so that we can better navigate our lives. So, um, everybody just take a deep breath. Take, yeah, fantastic. So, uh, close your eyes and put your hands on your thighs, palms down on your thighs. Stack your spine, put your neck 
right on top of that spine, your head on top of your neck, and just begin to breathe. And breathe at whatever your pace is, whatever is comfortable for you. And as you breathe, take a couple of deep cleansing breaths where you take a deep breath in and then you exhale with a bit of a sound. <sighs> Inhale. And as you breathe, begin to just have in the back of your mind the idea that every single breath is releasing toxins, anxiety, and stress. And inhale, with each inhale, you are breathing in new life, new possibility. And that that cycle, that cycle is natural and normal. And even when you take your attention away from it, it is in operation. Inhaling possibilities and new beginnings. Exhaling stress, toxins, stuckness. And now just begin to rub your hands up and down your thighs very slowly. And put your attention on the sensation in your fingertips as you rub your hands up and down your thigh. And if thoughts come to your mind, just take your mind and place it on the sensation in your fingertips as you rub your hands up and down your thigh. And now bring such focus to this movement of going up and down your thigh that you begin to feel actually the ridges of your fingertips moving across whatever is between you and your thigh if there's fabric there. Let your focus become so keen that you can literally feel your finger tip ridges. And if you feel any other sensations like air or temperature, be aware of that. Maybe the temperature is different where your fingertips meet with the fabric that you're rubbing or your skin, if that's the case. Just be aware. And now you can bring your hands to resting position. And just feel the vibration, feel the sensation that is left over from that rubbing. Take a couple of deep breaths at your own pace. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes and become present. So everything here is something you can walk away with and apply in your life. Realize that everything is a tool that you can use and practice and turn into a skill in your life. And literally becoming aware of the, the, the ridges as you rub your hands together like this or as we were doing it across the fabric. It does 
something to focus the mind. You get out of the mind. You get into being, and it helps you to move from the chaotic mind into literally the gray matter that is more your executive thinking. So you can walk away with that tool and use it in your life when and however you need. What what I want you to know is that there's a bunch of lies. My book, the Little Book of Big Lies, talks about how we get snagged by lies and distortions, and we're not even aware of it. And what we're going to do is just dive in to see where we are with ourselves. Remember, this work is your work. No one will see this. So we're going to take a moment and just. Fill in the blanks on this、uh, self-assessment. On a scale of one to ten, ten being the best it can possibly be, and one being non-existent. I want you to rate yourself regarding the following statements. Okay. Now here's the key to、uh, rating yourself: no judgment. If you leave the judgment out, then you'll be able to be more objective. It suggests that you add to your life this prompt: If I tell myself the truth, when you say that to yourself, it really does remind you that the truth can set you free. Or the only one on that on that、uh, slide that really matters is the very last one. I rate my desire to change my life for the better at. If you have that number high, then the rest of the other prompts won't matter because that number will serve you in doing the work you need to do that will ad- address all the other questions. And so the power in that is that wherever you are. The only thing you need in your life is a desire to change. That's all you need, and no judgment, because change is not something that our nervous system does willingly. So having support that helps you know where to look, how to look, so that you can make the change and stay present to your intention. Is all that you need to transform your life. Life is bumping into life, creating more life. All these other ideas that you bring to the table about what's going on, and how life is, and how hard it is, and how unfair it is, and how personal it is. All of that; those are lies that we have embraced for a number of reasons. But when you boil life down, it really boils down to this: life is simply bumping into life, creating more life. Life is a creative force. This medium that we live in is creative. You are a creation of life. You are innately creative in your own right because you are the DNA of the creative essence of life. So when life is doing its thing, and it bumps into the creative force that you are, how you respond creates something new. And so your life, it can really be boiled down to how you respond as life is bumping into you. It's not personal; it's a process. And as you begin to understand that life is not happening to you, life is happening, then you can be proactive. In how you meet life, this is the most pure and real definition of yourself. You are innately 
creative. That means creative enough to design and redesign your life, resilient enough to weather any storm, empowered to choose and re-choose and re-choose and re-choose how you see and respond. You are mystically whole. That means that you were born literally with everything you need to change your life, to navigate your life, and to always move it towards a higher realm. And you are undeniably worthy. No matter what has happened in your life, no matter what, you know, some unconscious person has said, no matter the uh, unhappiness or so tragedy or anything like that that has bumped into you, none of that can disrupt the truth that you are innately creative, resilient, empowered to choose, whole and worthy. And when you think about yourself in this way, you can think about what happens when you cut yourself. When you cut yourself without you doing anything, there's a whole process that is innate in you that begins to operate to protect you from that cut. And it begins to heal itself. And when it comes to our emotions, that is the case as well. When it comes to our psyche, that is the case as well. You've got everything you need. So you have the intention to be all that you can be to step into that next bit of iteration of yourself. And you make that your burning intention nothing can stop you. Our inner fitness community, I invite you to stay, join, and learn to turn wellness concepts into action. Living life well takes practice, y'all. So simply click the subscribe button to practice together, grow this conversation, and change the world. I can't wait to read your comments and hear how your life changes for the better. Thank you for subscribing. Let's thrive.